I'm Leslie P. Cruz Jr., and this is my story. Why do I like to paint? Well, it's a form of therapy in one respect. This is my art studio today. Here's some of my brushes. <laughs> what do you see out there? Well, this is what I see. I don't see gloom and doom. I can remember in my youth, just drawing pictures, capturing the things that I think are beautiful. My mother well, had artistic talent. She used to paint in oils and stuff. So I guess uh, the, some of that interest got to me. My parents were separated when I was seven, so I didn't have them to rely on. I spent the next 10 years in an orphan's home. My mother couldn't handle it anymore. Five kids left alone and my father gone. My separation in my early life made it more important to have somebody care about me and my, my brothers and sisters and how uh, that affected us. Most of the guys I knew were all ready to go, hot, hot to trot, and here's a chance that I gotta go to somewhere and do something. I was uh, still a loner, because I know that when I came in, they didn't look at me. He was too confident that he's gonna mount anything. To get into that brotherhood, you had to prove yourself first. Richard Vargas was a, a tent mate, and when we were in England, uh, one of the things that I admired about Richard was every night he would kneel down beside his cot and say the rosary. This is the real thing now. No more maneuvers and play, this is it. safe there for the moment, but then uh, as the things quieted down, I could hear uh, Vargas crying and whimpering, and a shell had landed right beside him. His head was at my shoulder when I put this tourniquet around him, and I could see his leg shredded. I said, uh, I knew I couldn't cope with that when I found out that he had died. I just went across the road, and I just sat on the road and cried it out. And, it sounds so callous, but uh, there wasn't much you could do. It's always been with me. There is no real freedom in a sense. We're all obligated to something or somebody. So, um, in Holland, we're in it day after day after day. It can be hell. sudden I'm in Belgium. I felt this hot sensation in my hand and I knew I had been hit. They named it a million dollar wound, a light wound that would get him out of the front and the situation. And uh, to this day I'm still carrying a, about a, a 3 8 inch piece of shrapnel on my left wrist which makes it hard to operate. There was no family to come back to. I was just looking for a place to hang up my hat, and I came back to Philadelphia because that's where I had grown up. 
I was able to spend uh, four years at the University of Pennsylvania studying architecture. Well, that was my career. I worked as an architect for, uh, I guess, about 60 years. I attended the church in, uh, right up the street, which was the Chelton Avenue Methodist Church, and I uh, met Shirley, and a year later we would become married. And when her mother died, we decided that we would uh, look for another home a short time after that, and we have lived here ever since for 62 years. The fact that I was placed in an orphanage made it more important to have a family and, and to make the family function the way it should function. And I think we achieved that. The question was asked to me uh, what I think about my country and what it means to be free. I think, you know, an American citizen should be basically a responsible person to his family first, to his community, and then to his country. The National Warplane Museum in Geneseo, New York, has a airplane up there called W-7, Whiskey 7, and it is the same plane that I jumped out of on D-Day. We were fortunate enough to have a number of our grandchildren and great-grandchildren be there at the air show to participate with us and actually get a ride in the same plane that their grandfather rode in. What do you see out there? Well, this is what I see. I don't see gloom and doom, and this is your Garden of Eden. This is what you were supposed to have. And it's been a good life, uh, in spite of all the turmoil. How can you be 92 years old and not be blessed? Those are, of course, emotional statements, and they're always hard to, to state. And <clears throat> when you have 13 great-grandchildren, you have to know that you were blessed by God. And I am.